Monsecur. Much has been written about Monsecur, its fall, and the persecution of the religion of good men, the so-called Catharism. Everything concerning this fortification has been surrounded by a halo of romanticism on the part of some and skepticism on the part of others. Whether or not it was a construction that housed some sort of rail with whatever form and content, or simply the ultimate refuge for a few hundred believers in the faith of pure love, its magnetism and the history that it has led has made it the focus of multiple speculations. From being the possible location for the Montsauvat guardian of the grail of Paul Fram von Eschenbach, to being the place where it was zealously guarded until the Albigensian treasure was put in safekeeping, namely composed of gold and silver, or perhaps the Gospel of Saint John, or other writings that would keep secrets about the Christian religion. The mysticism of finding a place with such deep spiritual connotations allowed us to enjoy a special solstice. We present you a report on the history of this fortress of Vertigo that kept during the siege of 1244 the mystical treasure composed by the deep faith of the Cathar martyrs. The mountain or POC de Montségur belongs to the department of Ariège district of Foix, in the region of Occitanie, in the south of France. It is located near the Lasset River, 21 kilometers southeast of Foix, 116 kilometers from Toulouse, and 76 kilometers from Carcassonne. The ruins of the fortress of Montségur are at the top of the park, at 1,150 meters above sea level. Poc is an Occitan world which, according to the interpretation of the historian Napoleon Pira, comes from the form taken in Ariège by the Occitan word Puec or Puoc, from the Latin word Podium. Anyway, its meaning is that of a peak. Evidence of human settlements in the castle area dates back to the Stone Age. There are also remains of Roman occupation as Roman coins and tools were found in and around the seat. The castle has known three critical periods during which the fortress and its surroundings gradually changed. Montsegur 1. At the top of the mountain or poke, a first fortress was erected. It is documented from the 13th century and now by the declaration of Raymond de Perey or Raymond de Pereira in 1244 in front of the Inquisition. Little is known of this first, except that it was in ruins around 1204, Montsegur II. It was at the beginning of the 13th century that the Qatar fortified village or Castro was built under the direction of Raymond de Pereille. Montsegur III, the third fortress, known as Montsegur III, is a castle in ruins today. It was built after the Qatar surrender in 1244 by the family of the new lord of the place, Guy Doisien de Lévis, under the mandate of Louis IX, to host a garrison of civilians on the crossings towards the border with the crown of Aragon. It could be abandoned after the Treaty of the Pyrenees in the 17th century with the new layout of borders. The village of Montegur. The village, we can see now at the foot of the castle, appeared after its construction. In the historical fonts appear a community at the end of the 13th century that is probably part of the family of builders of the castle. It is not until the end of the 16th century that the presence of a village accompanying the castle reappeared in the documents. The history of the Qatar Monsegur. The castrum included the fortified residence of the Lord, Raymond de Perey, of the Mirepoix family. He shared the lordship of the enclosure with his cousin, Pierre Roger de Mirepoix, the Castellum, or Castel, and the Qatar village. 
surrounded by a fortified enclosure. On one side of the current road, there were three walls, the first of them located at the height of the current ticket office. About 800 meters on the other side of the poke, there was a watchtower at the Roque de la Torre. The entrance to the castrum was defended by a barbican. Inside the walled enclosure, there was a village. Only a few terraces remained to the northwest of the current castle, where the foundations of several houses stairs to walk between the terraces, a cistern and a silo were located. Monsieur was the home of a large Qatar community. As such, it underwent a series of siege attempts, of which only the last one bore fruit. The first was in 1212 by the hand of Guy de Montfort, brother of Simon IV de Montfort, who led the second in 1213. In 1215, the Lateran Council cited the fortress as a lure of heretics. In 1229, Monsegur's role as a refuge for the Catholic Church was reaffirmed in the Treaty of Meobarie. Welcoming from then on the Feidi knights dispossessed on their lands, including Pierre Roger. From 1232, this role was reinforced by the arrival of the Catholic bishop Guillaume de Castres, who, because of the Albigensian Crusade, moved to the castle of Montsecur, being welcomed by Ramon de Pereya. From that moment, Montsecur will become the seat of the Qatar Church. In July 1241, Raymond VII of Toulouse, by order of Louis IX, initiated a siege that did not have significant consequences. In 1242, eleven inquisitors were assassinated in Avignon by a garrison of Pierre Roger de Miopois, an action that could have unleashed future events since the last and definitive siege was orchestrated by a seneschal of Carcassonne, Hugues de Darcy and the Archbishop of Narbonne, Pierre Mel, by order of Blanca de Castilla and Louis IX in 1243. At the end of May, Pereya and the whole hierarchy of Catharism would be sheltered inside the castrum. It is estimated that in the small fortified complex there could be about 500 people, including defenders, their families, and about 200 Qatar believers, among whom were perfect refugees. During the siege, it will be the cousin of Pereya, Raymond Roger de Mirepoix, who will occupy the role of the military head of the square. This siege lasted for 10 months, accentuating day by day the precariousness of the living conditions of the besieged. At Christmas, the watchtower was seized and armed with a trebuchet or catapult that relentlessly bombarded the position of the besieged people. A month later, the Barbican fell into the hands of the attackers. The last assault launched in February was repealed, leaving the besieged very weakened. On 1st March 1244, Perugia began to negotiate a surrender. The conditions of the royal army were as follows. Whoever abdicated the heresy could live. Whoever did not could die at the bonfire. On the morning of 16 March 1244, a gigantic bonfire could skew the lives of more than 210 faithful Qatars who were burned alive. These included Ramon de Pereya's wife, Corva, and his daughter, Esclarmonda, who would renounce the abdication days before of the bonfire. This would be the final fatal consequence of the Albigensian Crusade ordered by the Pope Innocent III in 1209 against the Qatars. The place known as Cam dels Cramats, field of the burnt, where it has been considered that the pyre could have been, is remembered today with a steel in front of the meadow, in memory of those immolated with the epitaph, als Cátars, als Martins del Pur Amor Cristian, 7 de Mars de 1244. The historian Diodar Rocher and the Société du Souvenir et des Études de Qatar 
arranged the commemorative seal which was inaugurated on 21 May 1961. The Hidden Treasure Christmas 1243 On Christmas 1243, Mathieu and Pierre Fonny hid the treasure of silver and gold of the Qatar church. They went to Camon, where they were told to go quietly to look for it towards the Savarté, to the cave of Ponce Arnaud de Chateau Verdun, nephew of Pierre Roger de Mirepoix, son of his sister Serena, good woman. Lent 1244. In February 1244, Mathieu returned and explained to his companions in Montague in which cave he had hidden the cargo. 15 March 1244. Emile Acar, Lorraine de Toulouse, Hugues de Mer de Carman, and also Pierre Savatier, according to historians such as Michel Roquevert and Anne Brennan, could move towards Cassou, the Chateau de Saint in Bras de Lyon, and Usson, where they would meet Mathieu again. Michel Roquevert relates in Histoire de Qatar the following. We know from our survivors that, on the night of Thursday 15 to Wednesday 16, Pierre Roger de Mirepoix hid four perfects underground, there are many chasms in the mountain of Montague, after descending under the castrum through the precipice with the help of a rope. According to Roquebert, seconded by other writers such as Anne Brennan, they were a Mielecar, a certain Peitavi, who is undoubtedly the perfect Toulousain Peitavi Lohan, a so called Hugues, who can be known other than Hugues de Mer, a perfect from Caraman, and a fourth one that is not named in the sources, but that must have been Pierre Sabatier. Roquevert relies on the fact that the perfect Peitavi, Hugues, and Pierre Sabatier witnessed during the siege and also later, so they were not burned. According to Roquevert, they went to rescue the treasure hidden in the forest so that the church would not lose its treasure, which was hidden in the forest. They knew it. So it was merely to recover the gold and silver evacuated by Mathieu and Bonnet towards Christmas. Mathieu had returned approximately in the middle of February and would have explained to his companions in which grotto and forest he had deposited his cargo. It is possible that they recovered it. It is known that they went to Cassou, then to Prat de Lyon, and from there to Ousson, where they met Mathieu again, a church and its treasure in exile. Italy 1250 and 1252. According to Roquevert, the Bishop of Cremona has asked Bertrand Marty to send two of his companions to offer him news. Etavi Lohan and Pierre Sabatier later found themselves safe and sound in Italy. One can bet that at the same time as the news of the end of Monsieur they took with them, as did other Qatar communities, the treasure of the church. Am Brunon, in Les Vrais Visages du Qatarisme, describes that it is highly probable that the escaped were charged with bringing the treasure to Lombardy, where there was an Occitan church in exile. The letters from Cremona were answered by Bertrand Marty. The acts of the Inquisition referred to Peitavi in 1250 in Lombardy. We find that Père Sabatier around the Dickens Raymond Dumas and Raymond Mercier in the exile in Pavia in 1252, which the dispositions of the survivors placed in Montsecure in March 1244. He must have been the fourth fugitive according to the disposition of the Angie de la Villani. Montsecure as a solar temple. Many researchers have theorized about the possibility that Montsecure was designed as a solar temple, especially since the writings of Fernand Niel in the 1950s. This is because at different times of the year, during the solstices and equinoxes, curious lighting effects can be seen between the arrow slits and several specialists have projected the straight lines of the solar alignment, especially visible on the day of the summer solstice.
Although this effect is very curious, we can't relate it to the intervention of the Cathar building, Monsecure 2, as we do not know the layout of the building at the time. It should be borne in mind that the current complex dates from after the fall of the Cathars and would have undergone modifications up to the 17th century. To memory of Monsecure. As we have already mentioned, the current castle of Monsegur is the third structure erected on the hill and receives annually more than 40,000 visitors who attend the call of remembrance of the tragic events that occurred in the 13th century and to the spirituality that the building and the mountain exude. The castle has been listed as a historical monument by the French Ministry of Culture since 1862. The rainwater cistern still exists and the walls were rebuilt in the 1970s. The village of Montsegur holds a museum which houses the discoveries of the excavations carried out in the historical site of the castle. Some of the exhibits are cannonballs, scissors, weapons and other objects of daily use of the 13th century, as well as a permanent exhibition on the history of Catarism in the Ariège, morals, reproductions and a pair of skeletons belonging to the siege of the fortress. There are different theories about the Cathar treasure, apart from these possible coins to help Catharism in exile. Ever since the esotericist Josephine Pelatin linked the Montsalvatge or Montsalvat of Eschenbach with the Cathar Monsecure, the relationship between the latter and the Grail began to spread. Thus, some researchers, such as Otoran, believed that the Grail could be the stone that fell from Lucifer's forehead or diadem, whether it was an emerald or another stone, perhaps a meteorite. It could also be a chalice or plate made of a special material. Joseph of Arimathea's chalice, containing the blood of Christ, the sacred writings of Catharism, the Gospel of St. John, some writing that could be a turning point in the Catholic Church. Whatever this supposed treasure was, it was certainly important enough for the bonhomme to risk leaving the castrum, hide the precious booty, and return to tell the story of its whereabouts and for 210 people to agree to die for it and for their faith. Whatever the fate of the treasure composed of coins to sustain the Qatar church in exile, the truth of the Qatar treasure will always be the mysticism of its people, the passion for the beliefs, the zeal which with they treat and defended them and the message of the Gospel of John. Perhaps that is why, eight centuries later, the laurel is still flourishing in the hearts of those who are passionate about the history of the Qatar Ponomba. Let this documentary serve as a tribute to their souls. <laughs>